and the fact that you've lived and paid and sweated and improved property in some cases for 20 or more years amounts to nothing apparently in their system well that's the Roman system of law because occupation is not the same as possession occupation occupatio is because the land was conquered the first concept the land was conquered and after the land was conquered positions were appointed and a register a role was formed and if your name is not on the roll as owning that land then under the Roman system you don't own it you can possess it but you don't own it and under Roman law they can come and get rid of you anytime they like so when we're looking at concepts here we think that that's the same system that runs today <clears throat> actually it's not when the Jesuits were formed in the 16th century it was the Jesuits that called themselves the soldiers of Christ as a military order and when they came to power they started to create provinces all around the world now as we've described on the Roman system a province was the way the Romans divided conquered land so if there's a province in the Roman system that's what they call conquered land and the province was run by a rector not a governor not a tribune not a censor a rector that was the title that we would view governor to be and if they were called a, a censor or a tribune or any other type proconsul role that was the same as being called sir lady esquire it was a qualification as opposed to the office it was a it was the same as our system and they deliberately confuse that they don't want you to know this so the rector and then the 2IC the rector was the um, uh, not the custodian the uh, mental blank there for a moment I'll come back to me the curator there you go the curator was the was the second role so the curator and the rector were the two roles now when the Jesuits came in and they called themselves soldiers of Christ by calling themselves soldiers of Christ there's an implication of what Christ is if they're soldiers of Christ then Christ by definition is then becomes a general and given that Christ has ascended to heaven we're talking about a general in heaven we're talking about a spiritual general now a spiritual general presumably has an army and whilst the Jesuits declare themselves to be representatives on earth when you read their literature and they talk about death being conquered and the earth being conquered what they're describing is the creation of a spiritual army so what the tricky original Jesuits well the tricky Venetians the masters of the Jesuits devised in the 16th century was that a spiritual army led by Christ conquered every square foot of the earth and because they conquered every square foot of the earth the Jesuits could create provinces for every part of the earth which they did and so the occupation of every part of the earth as conquered land was lawful that is the foundation of the modern land system the foundation of the modern land system and the enforcement of the modern land system is not based on steel power threat and what you see but on a spiritual army the claim that the spiritual army of heaven conquered the earth and that the agents of that spiritual army are the Jesuits and of course then the associated uh, Roman cult so enforcement then becomes mute because no physical army no matter how great can defeat a spiritual force in a different plane it can't be done 
So what they devised was a land claim system that could not be beaten unless you had a covenant and a structure like Pactum de Singularis Calium, like Eucadia, like the Society of One Heaven, where it is no longer just an army of heaven, but an army of heaven and hell, united heaven, the end of the war. So while we get stuck on enforcement, here we see under their own system, they recognize the spiritual claim as giving precedence to the temporal claim. Now with this knowledge, you will see a change, a slight change, but an important change in some of the tone throughout our documents where we will make clear that we have conquered every square inch of the planet. We, one heaven, the covenant, has conquered every square inch of this planet in accordance to the Roman cult's own philosophy. They can't dispute this because it is their own philosophy that we are using. And because we have conquered every single square inch of this planet in accordance to the covenant, we occupy the planet. Not them, we, by the Roman system. And when they do not acknowledge, then they, not us, are the terrorists. They are the enemy of the state, not us anymore. And they cannot defeat that without turning their own rules against themselves because they cannot beat the covenant of one heaven without a covenant greater than one heaven and there is no covenant they can do greater because this is the fulfilment of all their prophecy and all their promises. It is over for them. If only we continue to do what we're doing and awaken people up. Now, with this knowledge of occupation, it changes the way we consider to describe the different levels of our society because we want to and have every right to demonstrate the proof of what we say. Now, if a spiritual army has conquered the world, then let's see those spiritual beings that occupy positions of authority. Now, you may or may not recall that I said to you, the reason we can grow from the ground up and that we do not need anyone to go forward and say, I'm the president of United America or I'm the president of Australia or I'm the treasurer of this. The reason we don't need to do that is that those positions have already been covered by our spiritual members, by members of the military force that has historically already conquered the planet under the covenant. So if you want reason and proof of why spiritual members exist in the roles of the presidents of the unions and the presidents of the national structured societies and the presidents of the state societies until the temporal members have organized themselves not only is it that they are members legitimate members of the society but they are also the force that has conquered the entire world represented by this covenant and it is the end of the elite, the absolute end of the elite and the beginning of the promise that we've all been hoping for. Now, there's more we need to consider. And this is the name of the structure. Well, under the Roman system, if one has conquered a land, one creates a province. And one of the things that the Jesuits have been very good at doing is hiding the provincial structure of the world. Most people wouldn't realise that there is a Roman structure of provinces around the world. They would find that extraordinary. It is extraordinary. Well, let's not hide it. 
who occupies every single inch of the planet. We do. The covenant does. Each and every living soul, each and every spirit does, whether they realize it or not. The elite have lost. We have conquered and they cannot reconquer it ever again. It's over. Because they will never muster a more powerful army or a more, more powerful covenant or a more powerful argument than the one we're presenting. Never will they be able to. So, instead of using the word state or province, we, well, we, or state I should say, we use the word province. So the province is run by a rector and a curator. So that's the, the term that we wish to use instead of the word state. So instead of the state of Virginia, we hope that members will accept that it is the province of Virginia. And why is it the province of Virginia? Because one heaven and the society of one heaven and our ancestors and our forefathers have conquered that land and given it back to us. So when we call it a province now and not a state, we say in that one word, that we occupy it, not them, we occupy it. The same goes for where I live, the province of New South Wales rather than the state of New South Wales. We, we say uh, in, in Canada we have provinces. In right around the world we have provinces. And I hope that, that this is something that you all find are uh, uh, positive. Now, above that, we have the issue of what do we call nations? Now, nations of the word natio, its origin means a race or a tribe. Now, I respect both. I respect the fact that there are tribes and we were born out of tribes and I respect that there are races and different races. But there wouldn't be one country on the planet now that is not a mixture of people from different cultures. It is its own unique mix of different cultures and languages. And that we are not just one tribe, but many tribes. And we're not just one race, but many races. So if you use the word nation, you're really applying a standard that says either one race dominates that particular place, as the dominant race or the dominant tribe and the rest of us are animals or you are denoting that at some time in future the aspiration just by that word is for some purification of either a tribe or a race there is a better word a word that promotes the concept of a whole because it means a whole a word that promotes the concept of a universe and inclusion because it means inclusion. A word that recognises the importance of awareness and learning and growth because that is exactly what we know it to be. And the word is university. So rather than calling nations nations, we seek to call societies of a country level universities now what does that do when we call them universities it means no longer are we presenting ourselves potentially as an adversary as one that seeks to do battle we are the custodians of knowledge of ideas and we come in peace and we come to consume and we are groups of knowledge and not groups of tribes and war and power. So I hope that you consider that idea. I hope that you consider that as, as, a, as a sensible evolution. Now as to the local level, at the county level and the council level, the word that we seek to use is campus. So when we look at the structure now, instead of nation, we say university. Instead of state, we say 
province instead of local, we say campus.